Hi there everyone. If you've ever wondered what makes a great lithium ion cell for a long range drone flight pack, then you're in the right place. Today, we're gonna to be tearing apart two lithium ion batteries. This MolyCell P45B, which is among the best 21700 cells that you can use for long range drone packs today. And this cell from Goldline, who make another 21700 commercial lithium ion pack. We're gonna be cutting them apart, seeing if there are any differences, and seeing if there's anything that can explain the difference in performance between these two cells. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. Before we start cutting open these cells, a brief note on safety. Lithium batteries can contain a lot of stored energy and they also contain harmful chemicals. I'm wearing gloves and eye protection in a well-ventilated space when I do this disassembly and I wouldn't advise you to cut lithium batteries open at home under any circumstances. If you're interested to know what's inside, just watch this video. All right, we're gonna start with this commercial cell, which is made by Goldline, and it comes from this Goldline 4,000 milliamp hour 4S lithium ion pack for long range drones. So I've already disassembled this pack, or one like it, and we've extracted one of the cells, and now we're gonna cut it open and see how the cell is actually constructed inside. To start with, I am just gonna cut the end off the cell, and then I'm also gonna cut the top off the cell here, and. I have to go slowly and carefully, and you'll see that I'm wearing gloves because these cells are pretty tough. All right, so there we have it. Cutting the bottom off this cell reveals just a whole rolled up jelly roll of material with just huge numbers of copper tabs. And every copper tab is connected into the bottom of this can. It looks like they may be spot welded or maybe attached just by pressure. Let me see if I can sort of peel these copper tabs off the base of the battery so we can see how they're actually connected. So all of those copper tabs are sort of brought together and they're soldered or welded probably onto this nickel strip here, yes. You can see all the individual spot welds. And then this nickel contact is almost certainly spot welded onto the nickel plated steel bottom of the can here. Now I'm gonna cut through the top of this cell and we'll see how the positive connection to the positive end of the battery is made. There we go. So then we see the top of the jelly roll. You can see all the aluminum foil tabs all coming out of the top here. And again, it looks like the same construction as what we see at the bottom of the battery. We can see that this is similar to what happens at the bottom of the cell. All these aluminum foil contacts are sort of brought together and they're spot welded onto this little plate here, uh, which feels like it's made out of aluminum as well. And then that is welded with some little spot welds here onto the top of the cell. For those of you who might have seen my previous uh, battery disassembly video, this is definitely a multi-tab jelly roll where you've got lots and lots of aluminum tabs coming out of the cylindrical jelly roll and then all brought together and spot welded onto a single contact that's then connected to the top of the cell. You can also see this uh, purple insulation here to protect the positive terminal of the battery, which is all these aluminum tabs, from coming into contact with this outside can, which is connected to the negative terminal of the battery down here. All right, so with the top and bottom off, I'm gonna try and carefully cut down this cell so we can remove the casing and see how the jelly roll is actually all rolled up inside. All right, fantastic. That Dremel was definitely the right tool to get this can open. With the can apart, we can remove the jelly roll. There we go. You can see that the inside of this can is insulated with a uh, plastic polymer film so that uh, the actual jelly roll doesn't contact the metal inside, except obviously at the bottom of the can where we saw all the contacts being brought together and soldered to that, uh, that little nickel piece there. Inside we have the jelly roll. And what's really interesting about this is along the top here are all the copper tabs that have been cut off and brought together. And there are just so many of them. They are hard to see, but you can sort of see 
where they've been cut. So there's one there, there's one there, definitely one there. Evenly spaced along the uh, copper anode. And then on the other side, we have the aluminium foil cathode here with the uh, lithium manganese nickel cobalt oxide layer. And then we have this porous polymer film that's uh, soaked in a liquid electrolyte to allow for the ion exchange in the cell. If you're enjoying this video and value the work that I'm doing for you and the rest of the FPV community, then please consider supporting me, either directly through Buy Me A Coffee or on my Patreon, where you can get some nice perks, or indirectly using the affiliate links you can find in the video description on my website, aosrc.com, or by picking up any product with the AOS brand. I really appreciate all of your support because it allows me to do what I love, which is to continue to make more videos like this for you and other pilots. Thank you so much in advance. Now on with the video. Now it's time to cut open this MollyCell P45B and see if the construction inside differs at all from what we've seen with the gold line. All right, so now we've got this apart and I've removed this little plastic insulating piece. We can see that the construction of this Molly cell is very different from the gold line cell. Rather than having lots of copper foil tabs that are all brought together and then spot welded to this little nickel plate that's then spot welded to the bottom of the can, we instead have what looks like three larger copper tabs coming off the jelly roll, one in the center, one midway out, and one at the very edge. And they're all brought together, and then the copper tabs themselves are spot welded onto the bottom of the can. This tab, the spot weld is still there, but we also have evidence of spot welding on this tab, and this tab doesn't appear to have been spot welded. So maybe that's just a contact, like a, like a press contact onto this tab. But we have clear evidence of some sort of welding or crimping process on this tab. And then definitely some evidence of crimping or maybe spot welding on this tab. But there's no nickel interposing metal piece here. We're going straight from the copper straight onto the bottom of the can. Now let's cut open the top of this cell and see how Molly Cell do their cathodic connection. Oh, occupational hazard, I'm gonna need a new blade. All right, so I've cut the top off this Molly Cell battery and it's again got a different construction to the cell from Goldline. So Goldline, lots and lots of these thin aluminum foil tabs brought together and then spot welded at the top, and then a single aluminium tab that's been spot welded onto the positive terminal of the battery. Again, just with about five or six spot welds at the top there. Compare that to what we see with the Molly cell. Just two really big, thick aluminium tabs brought together and spot welded together at the top here and then it, that tab is brought up to the positive terminal of the battery and connected just here. Now, as a final step, let's cut open this can and see if there's any difference in the jelly roll itself. I must say, I love how these things just pop open when you've cut them. All right. So again, we have a polymer lining to the metal can to stop anything shorting out. There's the start of our sheet of copper foil and you can see a big copper foil contact that's been spot welded on there. So this is quite a thick piece of copper that goes maybe a third of the way down the cell, and that's one of the connections to the bottom of the can. So we have our standard jelly roll here, roll of copper and aluminium foil with the anode and the cathode material. I've got a whole video on the construction of standard LiPo batteries. I'll explain all the chemistry and stuff involved. I'll put a link to that down in the video description. Okay, so here we have the first of our thick aluminium tabs. Let's see if we can find where that is on the foil. Just wondering if there's uh, any obvious... Aha! Yep, look at that. It's a really obvious section of reinforcement there with a long tab spot welded at multiple locations all the way along here 
to get a really, really good electrical connection. And that thick reinforcing tab is then coming up and out the top of the battery. Let's see if we can find one of the internal copper tabs and see if they do the same thing there. Yeah, absolutely. So here is a strip of copper. You see that here they haven't put any of the battery material. So there's none of the anode material there. We just have the copper and then this really thick copper strip that's been spot welded on. And that's what's giving the, uh, the current carrying path in this pack to get current out of the jelly roll and out to our quads. Now that we've taken these two cells apart, it's time to summarize the key construction differences between them. Starting with the gold line cell. The aluminium and copper foils on the gold line cell have an exposed strip at the edge of them. When the jelly roll is all rolled up, that exposed strip of foil sticks out of the top and bottom of the cell respectively. Those exposed pieces of foil are folded over and welded to an interposer, a nickel or aluminium interposer. That interposer is then spot welded to the negative and positive terminal of the battery. Compare that to the MoliCell P45B. We have no exposed strip of foil. Instead, we have several thick tabs that extend deep into the battery and are spot welded to the foil. These tabs are then welded directly to the positive and negative terminal of the battery with no interposer. It's my belief that this is a lower resistance way to construct a battery. The addition of that interposing piece, that interposer is going to introduce extra spot welds, which will introduce extra resistance. And in the case of the gold line, it looks like at least one of those interposers is made of nickel, which is perhaps not the most conductive material, whereas all of the connections in the molly cell are made either of thick aluminium or copper strips, both of which are much more conductive metals. The spot welds in the molly cell are also different to what we find in the gold line. The spot welds in the molly cell have a lot more individual welds that are smaller and much more closely spaced together. Compare that to the gold line welds where we have a smaller number, maybe just half a dozen or so, of larger spot welds that are spaced further apart. I think that the molly cell method where you have a much larger number of smaller welds probably gives better contact resistance. The final thing to talk about is the length of foil in the two cells. The gold line cell has 145 centimeters of foil, whereas the molly cell P45 only has 130 centimeters. Now, you might think this puts the molly cell at a disadvantage, but not so, because with a shorter length of foil, molly cell are able to use slightly thicker foil in their cells compared to the gold line. And that difference in thickness is key to reducing the resistance for electricity to flow through the foil to get to those contacts. This means that molly cell also have to be using a different chemistry. They're getting more capacity out of a shorter length of foil, 4,500 milliamp hours rather than 4,000 milliamp hours that we get from the gold line. And this means the chemistry they're using is probably a chemistry that has more cobalt in it to improve that capacity. That will give them more capacity per centimeter squared of foil, but cobalt is an expensive mineral. So it probably also increases the cost of producing the cell. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I found it fascinating to see the differences in construction approaches that are used by Goldline and Molly Cell in making their batteries and how those differences in construction might lead to differences in performance that we see when we test those cells. If you love videos like this and wanna see more of them, please consider supporting the channel either directly through Patreon or indirectly using affiliate links and you can find everything you need down in the video description. If you're thinking of making a purchase at any of the stores that I have affiliate links for, why not click through on the affiliate link? It won't cost you anything. That store will make a little bit less profit from you and send a little bit of money my way to help make more videos like this for everyone in the FPV community. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.